Today on Horsepower TV, we'll show you how to build a hot pump gas Pontiac 455 complete with forged pistons, Victor intake, and 1050 CFM carb. Then we'll test this iron engine on our Horsepower Shop Dyno. In our race of the week, we'll follow a fast-moving family competing in three hot classes at the IHRA Empire National. Plus, examine some cool tools in your shop. So hang on for Horsepower TV. Hi, right, welcome to the Horsepower Shop. For many of you, the GM A-Body is a popular platform for just about any kind of street machine buildup. And the Chevelles are out there in the largest numbers. We'll show you more of this beauty later on. But did you know it was the Pontiac GTO that launched the muscle car movement back in 1964? Yeah, just take a look at this 69 Judge. Now, the carousel red paint and eye-popping graphics make this limited edition GTO a real attention grabber. Just check out what's under this Ram Air hood. What we've got is a 400 cubic inch thumper rated at 366 horse and backed by a Muncie four-speed. Now, in 1970, Pontiac put a new chief in charge, the 455. Now, today, we're going to show you how to build a 600-horse pump gas poncho using off-the-shelf parts. Yeah, but first, we need to make a trip to Jim Butler Performance down in Leoma, Tennessee. That's where they're machining the building blocks for our fearsome 455. Our freshly baked original block is line honed and bored 30 thousandths over and, of course, decked before it's ready for new parts. Meanwhile, here our 455's heads are ported, polished, and flow tested to give us 320 CFM and 28 inches of water. They're fitted with new valve guides. The new valves get a three angle 45 degree cut. The heads then are milled, cleaned, and ready for assembly. Now for the crank. Before balancing, its large rod journals are cut 50 thousandths to accommodate big block Chevy rods. And ultimately, the stroke will be 425 versus the stock 421. Now, once the block has been washed with good hot soapy water, you can begin the assembly process. Now, I've already dropped in the Federal Mogul mains and applied the assembly lube. And back here, we're using a rope type seal that seems to work best with these Pontiacs. Now, when I install one, here's a little trick that I like to use. Use an old socket there to just roll the seal down in the receiver groove and seat it really well, and then trim it, leaving about 30,000 sticking up on each end. Then you can apply this non-hardening sealer. That way, when we put the main cap back on, well, there's a little bit of crush there, and it'll seal real well. Well, now we're ready for the crankshaft, which has been stroked by Lenati to four and a quarter inches. Now, when you combine that with our 60 thousandths overbore, Hey, we're going to end up with 474 cubic inches. We're using ARP studs on the mains, which means the centers will get torqued to 100 foot-pounds and the outers get torqued to 90. And back here on the rear main, we'll torque them to 120 foot-pounds. Now, once all that's done, you want to go ahead and spin the crank several times so you can seat that rear seal. Now, the rest of the bottom end uses Eagle rods and forged pistons from Ross Racing. Now, we ordered our Speed Pro Molly rings oversized so we could file fit them for the proper end gaps. Top rings are 20 thousandths, second rings are 14. Now, the Federal Mogul race rod bearings are clearanced at two and a half thousandths. Okay, 75 foot-pounds, we can turn this thing over. Well, our camshaft selection is crucial to getting big power from our big Pontiac. So we had Lenati grind up this special roller that specs out at 301 degrees duration with a 648 lift on the intake and 309 degrees duration with a 648 inch lift on the exhaust. Now, we had everything ground on 108 degree lobe separation for a strong mid-range. Now, the thrust plate sets the end play on the cam and keeps it from walking forward out of the block. Plus, it eliminates the need for a cam button. To make sure our cam stays phased in properly, we're using this double roller timing set we got from Jim Butler Performance. The multiple keyways provide timing adjustments up to nine degrees before or after top dead center. 
Now, previous testing tells us the Pontiac makes the most power at four degrees advance. So after degreeing in the cam, we made our marks to give us that, and we're ready to boat this down. You know, with a cam as big as ours and some serious seat pressure on those valve springs, well, this lifter valley area needs some reinforcement. So what we did was we got some bolt-in lifter bore braces from SD Performance. Now, not only did they tie in the entire lifter valley area, but they also let us run rocker ratios of up to 165. Hey, I got that drive shaft for that oil pump too, right here. It might just need that. Now, the Pontiac has a pretty decent oiling system, but to make sure ours stays under pressure, we're going to use this Speed Pro high volume pump that's been modified with an 80 PSI relief valve. It has a three quarter inch inlet and a Moroso pickup welded to the body. Now, our oil pan comes from Moroso, too, and it's a seven quart low profile piece that gives us plenty of ground clearance and it'll fit just about any Pontiac chassis. Now on the inside is a special baffling that's gonna help keep the oil down in the sump where it belongs. Now the final piece in our short block assembly is the timing cover. We're using a stock GM piece that's been fitted with a Mazir high flow electric water pump. Now for street use, both the motor and bearings are larger than their race version. Man, that's a beautiful pump, but don't tighten it up all the way just yet. I've got a little trick that I want to show everybody after the break. Now, don't go away. We'll be back with more of our 455 Pontiac buildup right after this. Whatever you for the latest news on Horsepower TV, check us out online at horsepowertv.com. Hey, welcome back to the Horsepower Shop, where it's time to finish the buildup on our 455 Pontiac before we strap it to the engine dyno. Hey, what was that trick you were going to tell us about? For a leak-proof seal, you want to install the balancer before tightening up that timing cover. That way, the seal can center itself, then you can cinch everything down. Oh, by the way, that balancer bolt there torques down to 160 foot-pounds. Great tip. Now to make 600 horsepower, we're going to need some high-flowing heads. So we started with some of these Edelbrock Performer RPM heads and turned Jim Butler Performance loose on them for one of their street performance porting jobs. This will make them flow 300 CFM on the intake. Once the grinding's done, well, you can see the difference here on the intake. Of course, the exhaust gets the same treatment. Plus, they add a set of Faria stainless steel valves that measure 211 on the intake, 177 on the exhaust, set inside a polished 87cc combustion chamber. Now these dual valve springs from Lenati hold them in their seats. For head gaskets, we're using these Felpro Permatorks. Now they'll compress to 43 thousandths, and with our flat top pistons and 87cc combustion chambers, well, they're gonna give us a compression ratio of about 9.8 to one, and hey, that's gonna let us run pump gas in this ferocious 455. Well, you could obviously run your mouth on no octane. <laughs> Won't you help me here? Yeah, gladly. There we go. After torquing the head bolts down to 95 foot-pounds, we drop in our roller lifters, push rods, and 165 rockers. We're using Lenati roller rockers with our 455, and just lash the valves down to 24 thousandths. Now to make sure they hold that setting, we're using this aluminum stud girdle. Our high flowing heads are gonna need a good induction system, so what we're using is an Edelbrock Victor intake that's been ported to match our heads. Now check this out. Down inside, there's a little turtle that Jim Butler Performance has added to help redirect that fuel-air mixture and give us a few more ponies. Now because of the intake manifold's design, it requires a special valley tray that bolts in first. Of course, we're going to top the intake off with this 1050 CFM Holly Dominator carb, and we're going to add a one-inch aluminum spacer. Now this is going to give us a little more plenum volume and a few more horses. There aren't many choices when it comes to distributors for these Pontiacs, so we're using the stock piece with an electronic upgrade, so it'll interface with our Holly Annihilator ignition back there on the dyno. Now we'll finish it up with a set of their 9mm plug wires with these heat shields. Well, I just relash the valves, and once I get this cover tight, hey, we're going to be ready to make some power pulls.
All we right. made it. 612 horsepower. <laughs> On pump gas at that. Now that's one potent Pontiac. <laughs> okay, stay with us. We got more horsepower TV coming up. If you love cars, turn your passion into a profession. Call Wyoming Technical Institute now. Check out how a few months of specialized training prepares you for the career of a lifetime. Wyotech has the record, the experienced faculty, and the high-tech equipment to build your skills in automotive tech, diesel tech, collision refinishing, even street rod building and auto customizing. Don't choose a school until you check us out. Call Wyotech now for your free information package and get your career in gear.